So in your previous courses, you've probably heard discussion of something called inbreeding depression. So inbreeding depression is when a population has a larger number of individuals who are exhibiting a recessive deleterious phenotype compared to a population that maybe has the same allele frequencies but doesn't express that phenotype. So one common misconception people have about inbreeding is it causes deleterious alleles to be more common. That's not true. It just causes those alleles to more often be in homozygous individuals and be expressed. And we can see quantitatively how that looks. So let's think about the following scenario. Let's think about three genotypes here. These guys will be healthy, the wild type phenotype. These guys will also be healthy. We'll be thinking about a recessive deleterious allele. And then these individuals here, they'll be the sick individuals, right? So the lowercase allele is deleterious and recessive. So the fitnesses will be given by these values. And now, thinking about in a population with some degree of inbreeding, what are the frequencies of these genotypes? Well, we know the frequencies are given by this, by this, and by this. So we're looking at a population that has some degree of inbreeding with a deleterious recessed allele, and we know from our previous work that this will be the frequencies of those genotypes. So what are the frequencies of, of these alleles? So recall from earlier. We, we did a derivation that for a recessive deleterious allele, the equilibrium frequency is the mutation rate divided by um, S, right, where S represents how bad that allele is, that fraction, and then the square root. So let's do an example of the effects of inbreeding using a couple of realistic parameters. So let's assume that the mutation rate is about 10 to the minus 6, which is the approximate mutation rate for any given locus. And we'll assume a selective disadvantage of 50%. So this deleterious allele will be a major detriment, right? A 50% chance of killing an individual before it has kids or causes this individual to have half as many offspring, right? So a genuinely serious um, trait. So let's think about, first of all, a population that has no inbreeding. What are the frequencies of these sick individuals in that population? So we want to calculate what's the frequency of sick individuals. Well, the frequency of sick individuals, if there's no inbreeding, will just be frequency of this is q squared. We know that q is mu over s square root, and then we're squaring that. So that just gives us mu over s. This is 10 to the negative 6, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 2, if we write it out. So this actually means in a population, two individuals out of every million will be sick, right? So in a population with no inbreeding, with this mutation rate and this selective disadvantage, about two individuals out of every million will show this deleterious phenotype and be sick. Now what about with some inbreeding? and say we'll have an f value of 0 0.1, um, just to kind of pick an arbitrary value. So now the frequency of the sick individuals is given by q squared plus p q f squared mu over s is q squared plus p, p is 1 minus q times q, then times f. Now we can kind of multiply those last terms out. So this simplifies to mu over s. We have 1 times this times this. So that's just square root of mu s times f. And then a negative in this root times this root. So 
So now if we put numbers in, 10 to the minus 6, 0 0.5, plus 10 to the minus 6, 0 0.5, square root times 0 0.1, minus 10 to the minus 6 over 0 0.5 times 0 0.1. When we multiply all that out and combine all those terms, we end up getting this value, 0, 0, 0, 1, 4, 1, 8. And so now if we think about how many sick individuals are there per million, it's actually 142 sick individuals in every million. That's 71 times more sick people. So the allele frequency is exactly the same, because it's given by this, but in a population with just some inbreeding, we actually see 71 times more individuals that are manifesting this genetic disorder. So inbreeding, again, is not changing the allele frequency, but is making those alleles apparent a lot more often. And if you think about this population, it looks much, much, much less healthy than this population, because whatever that genetic disorder is that's in both populations at the same frequency in terms of the alleles, is 71 times more likely to be manifested in individuals and observed.